I know. We normally do Friday, but remember, everybody needs to say hello so I know you're in the room tonight because it doesn't show me every single person that comes in. In fact, I know a few people that have been coming in because it will show me once in a while. I need you to say hello so you get a chance to get the fair book. This is fair week. Uh, my name is George Gary and I'd like to welcome you so much into my own kitchen. I normally teach around the country and I write books, do the morning show. You probably saw me on a bunch of shows this week in the morning I was on. And then uh, next week I'm doing Los Angeles KTLA. I believe it's Thursday from my kitchen, but it'll be backwards. I have to shoot it backwards because behind us, you see all those windows, the sun comes in really bright in the morning. So I have to go and close the uh, pantry door and do it that way. And then you see the pot rack. So it's a different view from the kitchen. So uh, I'd like to first let you see who uh, helps me out. I'll let you see him completely, but you're gonna say hello. There's Neil. I thought you wanted me to come out the way you were talking. You will when we do the sangria. We've got sangria tonight. So okay. all week we've been doing food from the fairs because state and county fairs have shut down. They aren't even gonna do them. So I worked at the Los Angeles County Fair for 28 years. It's only for a three week thing, but people are kind of surprised. They go, you have so many jobs. But when I was at Disney, I worked at the fair also. I would do judging. And then once I was gone from Disney, I started working at the fair all the time. I was a cul culinary coordinator and I was in charge of all the contests and stuff like that. So what we've got is chili. We have more chili cook-offs than you can imagine. And I uh, judged a lot of them. We did barbecue contests too that were really fun. So I'm going to make a big pot of chili that is in my fair book called um, Firehouse Chili because a fire station won that year. This isn't their recipe, uh, but it's mine. We've got ground beef at uh, 80%, so about 20% fat. So I'll have a little bit of fat when I drain it. Let me put that in here now to start. And then the worst part of making chili, to tell you the truth, is having to cut all the vegetables. And it takes a little bit to do all that. So I did that ahead. So we've got all sorts of colored bell peppers. We've got celery. We've got onions. You can use cans of tomatoes or Roma tomatoes that I use. And I've got some uh, down there. I had some uh, heirloom tomatoes left from my uh, produce box that I get. Then we have a little bit of tomato paste. We have garlic. And we have our seasonings, which we've got, let me see, chili powder, cumin, cayenne, 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 cayenne West powder. <laughs> Cayenne. Cayenne powder. And then we have some salt. So first I'm gonna brown. Did this. you mention the beans? I don't think you mentioned Not the yet. Beans. That's our last thing. Mm. Neil's going ahead of me. Then we've got our red beans. And some people don't like beans in their chili, so you can uh, take it out and not use it. But uh, we're gonna brown our beef first, and then I will drain any fat and add our onions, and then we'll do close-ups with some of this stuff. The, I kept pretty much a lot of the juice from the tomatoes. Uh, if you like a chunkier chili, you could add um, without the juice. If you like it a runnier chili, you can go ahead and add a few, uh, uh, oh, about one 32-ounce uh, can of tomato sauce, and that's pretty runny. So. I'm watching to make sure I'm moving this around. I didn't use any oil because the beef has enough oil and you can use turkey instead if you want. You don't have to use ground beef. And if you want a little spiciness, just add a little bit of uh, sausage without the casings. With the casings, they're kind of chunky. Yeah. But we had so many contests out at the fair and uh, over the years and uh, one of my favorite contests, well, I like telling this story because it's pretty funny. And she's still around, I think she's 97, but Alberta, and she lives in San Diego, and she would win so many contests. And uh, she started doing contests because her husband worked at uh, 
um, the track at the fair because there's a, a track or there was a horse racing. So anyway, she, I was a judge, first time judge, and everyone said, watch out for a bird that she's really mean. And I always love the ones that they say they're mean because I will turn them around and become my friend. So Alberta's one of those people that I have become friends with. So Alberta, you had a cake contest and it was, you had to use three cups of cake flour, soft silk cake flour. And you can use, make any kind of cake you want. And there were 50 people that entered this contest. So I judged and tasted all the cakes. We don't know the names, their numbers, um, except after a while you get to know people. You knew who made which cake and the decorations, you just knew. So anyway, Alberta made this cake and she lost. And she comes up to me afterwards, she goes, you're the new judge, aren't you? And she's real gruff. And everyone told me, be careful, watch out. Don't go out to your car without a chaperone because <laughs> she'll probably take a tire iron if you didn't win, if she didn't win. So anyway, I said, yeah, I am. She says, why didn't my cake win? And she's like really mad at me. And I understand, people put their heart and soul into these cakes. And I said, which one's yours? She goes, that one, that one over there. All right, now I'm asking you all in your mind right now, think of a cake. All you have to use is three cups of flour. What flavor cake are you gonna do? Okay, I guarantee most of you are saying lemon, white, or chocolate. What kind of, have you heard this story, Neil? I have. And what, okay, don't you dare say, because Neil would tell, I'll make a sub. So anyway, she made a prune mocha cake. Prune. And when I bit, took a fork into it, a prune got stuck right on top of the fork. And the, I, I believe the thing that won that was like this light lemonish luscious cake. So I said, which one's yours? She goes, that one, that one over there. I said, the prune mocha cake? I said, really, Alberta, the mocha frosting is the best I've ever had. But prune cake? Of all flavors, you know, you should have gone with lemon or chocolate. Chocolate with the mocha would have been really good. Well, she said, then said, well, I won at the Prune Festival. I said, there you go. That is your market. Perfect. After that, she really valued my opinion to where she is the one that uh, won the spam contest that I told you guys about the other night. So, okay. So there's Alberta. And uh, I was invited to her birthday parties, you know, down in San Diego. She comes to classes when I was teaching down there. I do not see, back to our recipe, very much um, fat in here. I'm looking and I think it said 95% when I bought it, wasn't it? I think it was higher, yeah. Yeah. That's what so they have. we're gonna put, and if, after you cook all this, the fat does rise to the top and you can skim it off if you want to. So there's our onions. Onions are going in and our garlic. That smells so good. You know, you want to do a close up of that? Sure. Well, I, sure. But you can see there's just a little bit of oil on the bottom, but not enough to drain. Now it's um, liquid from the onions are coming up. And then we're gonna go with um, our peppers, which there's a lot of- A lot of color. Color and a lot of water in that. Let that turn that around, and that is colorful, isn't it? That looks it looks like that it looks, looks like good. a fruit salad. Now our tomatoes, uh, a lot of tomatoes. We'll try to move this around so we get a. Little, maybe I should have used a bigger pan, but hey, it's fine. It's going to cook down a little bit. I always say you should use the bigger, bigger. I know I think. say that. Uh huh. And all right, so we're going to let that cook. I'm just checking to make sure I tell you what to do. Bring to okay. Simmer about one hour. So we're gonna let this go for about an hour, and it'll start heating everything up. Then after that, we will add our tomato paste and all of our spices. After that, we'll let it go for about 20 minutes and then we'll add our beans. 
So we will be back after the hour. Okay, our chili's been cooking for about an hour and the tomatoes have broken down. Now we're gonna put our spices in. If you put the spices in too early, they'll um, kind of dissipate and you won't get a whole lot of flavor. So that way we put it in and stir that up. And of course, chili will taste even better tomorrow, but it'll still be good today too. Now our beans, if you want beans, drain those and rinse them. It's just one large uh, can of the beans. You can go ahead and re uh, constitute now you can do your own beans by just taking a pot of water bring it to a boil and putting the beans in and letting them sit there overnight so but you can see how beautiful that is and we uh, you could eat it now uh, the, the the meat and everything was so hot that the beans are already uh, plump you're just warming them up with the inside and then you've got that uh, beautiful uh, I was looking I thought I saw something else that I didn't put in there but I did don't see it It was an illusion it was illusion so there we go with our our chili and with soups and chilies I always like to put a little bit of sour cream blob on it not all that but I mean like portion of that I don't know why I think it needs a little bit of a dollop inside and there's our chili so we'll be back to do our drink of the week in just a few minutes well it's the end of the week Saturday and uh, don't forget you want to win the book so make sure you wrote your name down and you said hi and uh, we got to make some sangria because that's what they do out at the fair. They do big pots of it. And uh, I'm gonna make one real quick. And um, we've got two glasses. You put a little bit of the fruit that you're gonna use. We're gonna use some super fine sugar, just on top, probably about two tablespoons. Then we're gonna take orange juice freshly squeezed, which I did. And we're gonna take some lime juice freshly squeezed, which I did, I was squeezing them apple pieces just for decorative purposes and some lime and then we fill the rest up with our and our red wine right our red wine and i need to stir it can you grab me one of those big stirs neil because it kind of looks like well oh it's it's going down okay perfect thanks Let's see Stir that up. Now, a lot of sangrias, they they make them and they let them sit. You can let this sit if you'd like, but we're gonna add just a little bit more of the juices on top and taste a little bit. Oh, that's gonna be really good in an hour. But, uh, mm, mm, mm. Oh. Let's pour it some. It won't last that long. It won't last that long. Pour a little bit in each. And the table needs a drink too. The best part is eating the fruits too. And you can put berries, blackberries look really nice in that too. So anyway, we've got our chili from today and our drinks. And we got to have Neil come over and... Get over here. <laughs> and here's your drink. Thanks oh. to a cheers. cheers, a great week. Thanks. Cheers, everyone. Mm -hmm. That's good. Taste this. I'm gonna like it. He already had dinner tonight, so I want to see if he uh Oh, I guess it's good. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us all week, and thank you for uh, spending your Saturday with you, with us. And we'll see you on Monday. Take care. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.